Yo, what is up, YouTube? It's your boy, YBP Gang, YBP Nation, YBP Boxing, YBP MMA. Come at y'all with the UFC 290 full card prediction video. Gonna be going through all my picks for the entire card. Um, really good card from top to bottom. You know, we got, got the prospects, we got the champions, we got the contenders, you know, got the rise of Mexican MMA coming all together to make a beautiful card for 290. So we're gonna start. First fight of the night, Comella Kirk versus Esteban Nurbovich. Um, Comella Kirk, okay, from the U.S. Um, just from the tape I've seen from Comella Kirk, he's not really, like, good, like, anywhere. But his game is kind of, like, all well-rounded, I guess, with his, like, BJJ striking. But he's not, like, really particularly good anywhere. And then to contrast that with Esteban Nurbovich, like, he has such fast hands, so quick. Um, he'll just pounce on you. His last loss, he lost like a, I'd say it was a pretty close fight with uh, Loic uh, Radzabov. Um, really good fighter right there. Prior to that, he was undefeated. Contender Series fight was just lethal. You know, he knocked out. Um, Y'all can say what you want, you know what I mean? Uh, he knocked out a deaf guy, but that deaf guy, Thomas Paul, is a really good fighter. Take nothing away from him, but he's, you know, splendid fighter, good power himself. And then Cormella Kirk, you know, again, arm triangle by Damon Jackson. And then the fight with the Makwan Americani, like, it wasn't anything special. Like, you know, he had decent moments in the fight, but, you know, it's, it's hard to rate him that well because Makwan Americani, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to look good against a guy like that. So I just think Ribovich is striking, should be enough to get the fight, um, to finish the fight. I just don't think Kirk has anything, like, to, to counter that, uh, to counter the power. I think Ribovich is too fast, too powerful. Um, it'll get the job done in the first round by knockout. So give me Esteban Ribovich, um, El Gringo, my first round knockout. Next fight, got Shannon Ross versus Jesus Aguilar. Um, Shannon Ross, I mean, I've heard a lot of people this week, you know, trash on him just because, I mean, I guess the way he fights, he gets hit a lot, gets knocked down a lot, but you cannot, like, knock the, knock the man's hustle. Like, every single fight he's in, he's going to war, throwing punches, throwing, you know, power shots, all this type of stuff. And he never goes away in a fight. Um, we saw this in the, it's a really good fight to watch. Like when I when I rewatched it, I watched it initially 10 months ago when it first came out, Dana White's tennis series when they had like Bo Nickel and all those guys. Um, Raul Rosas was a really good season, but Benicio Salvador, man, he went against a, a lengthy striker in him, very flashy, Anderson Silva-like. Not, not skill-wise, obviously he might get there, but like just, the length was hard to deal with, so he had to really get inside, really try some stuff out. And in the first round, he got caught with like a lot of big shots, got knocked down, I think like three times, but just kept coming forward, kept coming forward. And then got some momentum at the end of the first round. Second round goes in. Um, and then I believe, I don't know, like he like contrasted from like the like the first first round getting knocked down three times and then at the end of it kind of like getting some momentum back second round he just continued building on that momentum and started pushing Vinicius Salvador back but it seemed like Vinicius was like setting up a trap not really sure because he kind of lured him in almost like how Desanya did uh versus Pereira lured him in and then caught him with like a left hook um and then just knocked him out there but Shannon Ross was like on his way to he was hurting like him with some big shots whether that was a part of his plan or not I don't really like to hear like people say like, oh, like I planned getting hit in the face five times and getting knocked out. Like that was part of my plan. Like, no, I mean, um, with Shannon Ross, I love his resilience. I love how he just keeps coming forward. I think he's gonna have a striking advantage in this fight. I think his was Aguilar just kind of throws like wild, like winging punches for like no reason other than set the takedown. Um, that's where I think I haven't really seen too much of Shannon Ross's takedown defense, but I, I did see he defended a takedown from, or he shot a takedown against Vinicius Salvador. So he has to have some sort of wrestling. In this game, I'm gonna assume, I'm, I'm assuming he watched tape for Jesus Aguilar. I think the striking advantage, and then his age, his toughness and all that type of stuff is really good. Because his last fight, I don't really, I didn't really look too much into the Clayton Rodriguez fight. Now, obviously I watched the fight, but it's like, you go in there against the guy who's like, levels ahead of you and you just get knocked down like you know 20 seconds he just kind of he got overwhelmed you know it's i can't really look at that and then use that to determine the winner of this fight because Jesus Aguilar is not going to do that 
um, versus Shannon Ross. He doesn't have the striking that Clayton does, the power, any of that type of stuff. Well, the power kind of does, but a lot of that is like just the wild stuff that he's just throwing. So I'm going to go with Shannon Ross by round three KO. Or no. I'm going to go round two. I think he gets it done earlier. Um, I just think there's, there's a striking disparity there, power disparity, and resilience disparity. I think he's just a lot tougher. He's going to stay in there. Um, and Ross is going to want it more. You know, a lot, of, a lot of Australian guys, a lot of Oceanian guys on this car, I think he's going to go out there, have a splendid performance, and pull off the upsets. So, yeah, give me Shannon Ross, boss like around knockout. Versus Jesus Aguilar. Third fight of the night, Cameron Simon versus Terrence Mitchell. I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. Like, I'm <sighs> Terrence Mitchell's like horrible. Like, when I tell you horrible, like that guy is like atrocious. Like, I'm telling you, man. Like this this guy. <laughs> yo, this guy, bro. This guy. I don't know like how I don't know how he got a UFC contract. I'm not sure. But no offense. And when I when I say when I say all this stuff, please, like Terrence Mitchell. If we ever cross paths, like, you'd probably beat me up, okay? I'm not saying, I'm just saying, relative to your UFC counterparts and people in the UFC, like, this guy is not, like, let me just, okay. The guys who was fighting, I saw, I was able to, like, I had to dig through and, like, do, like, extensive research, okay? I had to, like, really, like, look on the Facebook pages and find these, like, promotions that he was fighting on, bro. I don't know. I, Alaska doesn't have, like, Alaska has an MMA scene, but it's not as established. I mean, you think of the guys who have come out of Alaska, like, and come to the UFC, like, they're, a lot of them are fighting no-name guys. They haven't seen anyone of quality. Like, they're not just not going to get a lot of good competition over there. And you see, like, a lot of his fights, um, he immediately, I haven't seen a lot of his striking. The last time I saw him strike, he got knocked out by Car Car France, you know, with that long of a, okay, he's five foot ten. That's actually crazy. I saw him standing Next to Terrence Mitchell, he's actually not even that tall. He's just, like, skinny, like, or lanky. Um, but, yeah, I mean, on the feet, like, he's a fish out of water. Um, just, it's just atrocious on the feet. And then in the fights I did see, he has a good little double leg, good good takedowns. But I saw no takedown defense from the other guys and no willingness to get up. Um, just everything is so elementary. Like, all the stuff he's doing and, and the opponents aren't doing anything, like, uh impressive either you could you could just see the competition level like it just it just really wasn't good i just little resistance from his opponents i don't know this guy i mean and these guys aren't even really striking with him too i just i don't know at 33 years old man like i don't know you gotta you gotta be fighting some better competition to get back in the ufc i, I feel like but you could also make the argument okay he's knocking out he's finishing these these opponents and like one, two rounds, so give him his shot. But, like, against Alaskan competition, man, like, I'm telling you. I, I've heard some people say that Mitchell can pull off the upset. Like, I don't know what you're smoking, bro. This guy's chinny. Bro, there's, oh, my God. I'm going to find this clip, bro. I'm going to really find this clip. Shout out to David Onama. Bro, there's a guy, bro. Oh, my gosh. What's his name? Eastlick or something? Eastlick MMA fight or something like this bro there's a guy who knocked him out oh my gosh bro Woo. <laughs> hey. Woo. i'm telling you man i don't know if you can hear the audio let me see okay we gotta we up this why is it muted let me see is there no volume I'm not really sure why there's no volume, but. I don't really know, but. This was bad. Okay, this is actually the fight, actually. It's crazy. So you can kind of see, even though this is older, this is, this is from like a while back, but this was, I mean, this knockout was like bad. I mean, I'm telling you, it was bad, bro. After he was knocked out, bro, I'm, I'm, just watch, bro. Watch along, watch along, bro. After he got knocked out, bro, this man started shivering. I'm a, I'm a, his legs started twitching, bro. It's 
That shit is the scariest thing I've ever seen. I don't want to waste y'all's time, bro. And I see this in his career, too, like, uh, a lot of his career, but um, it's not much resistance, too, like, but he's able to get the back. He's able to, like, do some decent stuff, but it's against low-level competition, and it's nothing special. Like, I haven't seen any evolution. Like, he's still doing the same stuff, a lot of the same submissions. He's, like, smothering guys. I saw arm triangle choke. Some stuff like it's nothing. I just I wish he was doing it against better level competition because then it's harder to gauge. Like, can he still apply those same skills to like higher level guys? And Cameron Simon is a younger guy. He has had trouble like um, he got taken down like five times by Stephen Coslo, so it is a bit of a concern. But just the the level of competition disparity is like so big. And then Mitchell can't strike for anything. Like he's gonna if he doesn't get that first takedown, it's actually wraps. You know what I mean? Like, and then, like, look at that, bro. How do, you, how do you do that, bro? He's got some decent stuff in there. He might be able to... Ooh. Oof. Oh, man. I, I shouldn't even be laughing, bro. What the hell? That's not okay, bro. That's crazy. He literally slammed him, bro. I mean, bro, that's that's lethal, bro. Dude. Nah, do y'all see bro's legs? Oh, nah, that's just, that's devastating, man. That's that's the type of stuff where, like, if you're looking to go into MMA, like, you, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you're having second thoughts, you know what I mean? Because, I, I don't know. I, I, and I, you look at that. I see the same Terrence Mitchell, the same Terrence Mitchell that fought on contender or on 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 the Ultimate Fighter, and then now this, this Terrence Mitchell that's that's been fighting now on the Elastic scene. I haven't seen much evolution. He's doing the same stuff. I haven't seen much improvement from the in the striking or any of that type of stuff. Um, and he's chinny, man. He's chinny, taking a lot of damage, man. Even for a, for, for a sixteen fight career, he's taking a lot of damage, man. Um, so yeah, give me um, give me Cameron Simon. By honestly by knockout, even though he's not much of a finisher. Yeah, give me give me that knockout prop. I, I think I like that. He finished the fight at some point. Um yeah. Fourth fight of the night, Vitor Petrino versus um Marcin Pragneo. I didn't do too much research. I, I did see Marcin Pragneo's fight against William Knight. He just doesn't seem all that good, like just just kind of mid to me. And then you got a you got a prospect like this. I, I mean, this is a beautiful fight. If you if you can go watch it, like Vitor Petrino versus Anton Tercali, great fight. Um, good knockout on contender series. Marcin Pregnio, I mean, he can't have his moments. This Khalil Roundtree fight was a pretty good performance from him, but that was more of a byproduct of like Khalil being a little more reserved, you know. Um, Vitor is going to be more powerful in this in this fight. Probably better striking. Gonna have to take downs too. He's just better everywhere, so it's. I feel like it's really about then. Um, Cam Marcin Pratneo like uses experience, uses um, the wealth of knowledge that he's acquired, you know, in his UFC run to make things interesting. I don't know. I just don't know if he has the tools to to like do something like in this fight. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, the reach advantage. He's a little taller. But yeah, it's, just, it's hard to see like a method of victory for Marcin Pratneo. So yeah, give me Petrino by first round knockout. Maybe if Petrino like gasses out in the first round and then second and third, Marcin, Marcin Pratneo can hop on it. You know, use his skill set to pull something. But it, it's hard to imagine like a Marcy Pratneo win, to be honest. I can envision it. So give me Petrino by first round knockout. Another first round knockout I got here. Um, Jimmy Crew versus Alonzo Manyfield. This is uh, all the tape study I needed was in that first fight. I mean, Manyfield was on the way to winning in that fight if he didn't grab the cage. Um, Jimmy Crew did have really good takedowns. He was able to, but I mean, the the takedowns that he was like, he was getting touched up so bad on the feet that it was almost like I feel like if it was up to Crew, like I don't know if he would have like went to the ground. You know, like it's it's a part of his game, obviously, but. Um, he obviously wanted to strike, and then 
he was getting hit so much that he just he kind of had to wrestle, kind of forced to wrestle. And it ended up being, a, I think in this in this next matchup, he's going to try to go to that way more, maybe. Like, unless he's, like, magically got way better on the feet, improved his defense, he's probably going to want to wrestle way more in this matchup. Um, it's anything to avoid the striking with Alonzo Mayfield. But he was this, I mean, Alonzo Mayfield was this close, like, many times to stopping the fight um, in the first round, getting that first round knockout. I think this time it happens again. But this time he actually finishes the fight. So give me Manifield by first round knockout. Crew, I think, is live for a sub if you're looking like for um, on the other side of it. Just because of the takedowns and he's pretty good on the ground. He can he can get those submissions. I don't know if he has anyone in like recent memory. Okay, he had a Kamora here. Um, but yeah, I mean, just defense is too non-existent for me to pick him. So And Alonzo hits way too hard. So give me Manifield, another first round knockout for me. Then we have Yasmin Uregi versus Denis Gomez. Pretty competitive fight. I hear a lot of people counting out Denis Gomez. I mean, she's definitely live in this fight. She loves to scrap too. She's a warrior out there. Um, Brazilian. I think they're around the same dimension. She's like a little sorter. Uregi has like the the height and reach advantage. She's like the big prospect coming out of Mexico. Good striking. She got, got some submissions. Had a really good fight with Lucindo. Back here. This fight was like the women's version of like Guran Kudalatse versus um, Demir Magulov back in the day. Everyone was like, oh, those are future champions. That ended up, that, that, like, didn't end up coming to fruition because Guran just got KO'd by Elvis Brenner. And then Demir Magulov just got 30-26, 30-27 by Grant Dodge. Just got his back taken and just rolled with it. But, I mean, definitely in that fight, I mean, I want to see Lucindo's future. I want to see where Uregi can go from here. Two, two, you know, great ladies. A lot of potential in that fight. Um, honestly, it's really just came down to, like, I just really like Uregi. I think she, she's going to be really good for that strawweight weight class. I think she she has that finishing ability, too. Getting that knockout in her last fight. She's lethal. She's dangerous in there. But I think this is going to be a lot more competitive than people are saying. Both girls are tough. So I don't think Uregi is going to be able to finish Denise Gomez and vice versa. Um... But yeah, it's definitely gonna be like maybe some submission attempts in there. Maybe people are gonna get close to getting the finish, but I think it's gonna be a back and forth war and in the end Uregi is gonna get the dub by decision. Next fight, big upset. I'm picking <laughs> a lot of first round knockouts for me, man. I don't know. I, I just feel like people are gonna come out like a lot of energy for this car. It's gonna be um in the where is UFC two ninety? What arena is it's probably like T Mobile and all. T-Mobile, UFC 290 Arena. Um, where are they fighting at? T-Mobile Arena, yeah. Uh, is that right? Where is it taking place? Yeah, T-Mobile Arena, so. Um, it's gonna be electric, man. It's gonna be a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of energy in those fights. People are gonna come out swinging. I think, I mean, Chiris, man. You saw his weigh-in, man. He was throwing up his set, man. I, I seen that, man. That was <laughs> some crazy stuff. I don't know. I've never seen that one before, honestly. I've seen people throw up, like, like gestures, but yeah, but what was this, man? I don't, I don't know, man. I need someone to fill in. Maybe that's a is that a M? That's an M, no? But well, see, I don't want to where he had to hit. He, like this, this, this that's an M, right? That's an M. See, nah, see, nah. Don't come for me, now. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hey, I don't know what I just did there. I don't know. Hey, man, I don't know what I just did, but that seemed like an M, like M. I'm not sure what M for Mexico, maybe. Nah, but then he did this, so yeah, I have no clue. I don't even want to know, man. Shit. <laughs> but hey, I, when I see stuff like that, I mean, I get kind of scared. If you if you look at um his last fight with uh he he fights like a warrior, man. He fights like a dog out there. His last fight with Clan Carpenter, he was cooking him on the feet. Big power. I think he he knocked him down at some point in that fight. He was hitting him. If Clan Carpenter didn't have like a great chin and good resilience. And just, like, came there to fight, like, Edgar Chires would have gotten him out of there, like, quick, you know. But Chires, what I do worry about is the the, the submission def um, well, the submission defense and then um, takedown defense, obviously. Um, he lost, like, a tennis series. Had these two fights. I wasn't able to see these ones, but I was the, – the, the Carpenter fight impressed me so much, man, with his, like, with his striking and stuff. I think a lot of people are counting out um, – 
a lot of people are counting on Chowers. I think he's he should honestly, if you want to place a flyer at him, I think it's a really good underdog to to do it. I think Chowers a little just, just a little over teensy bit overrated. You know what I mean? Like we he's we've seen him get all grappled and like all scrambled in certain positions. Like he's not he's not, he is young too. He's not, he's only like twenty three. He's probably one of the youngest on the rosters. But like this, I mean, the odds are insane. I mean, it says minus a thousand right there. I mean, it's it's egregious, bro. Like they they like. See, I don't want to use certain language, but they they really like, they, man, they gobble, bro. Like, they all over him, man. Like, it's it's justified, obviously. I mean, he's you know he's Japanese, um, great looking kid, twenty three, five seven, seventy cent, uh, seventy inch arm reach. Like I say, Japanese, so innocent looking, great, great. I mean, good striking. He's a good, well rounded. You know, undefeated. So you could see. Why people would be so like eager to place bets on it, but I mean, like, this is not okay, bro. Minus 900, minus a thousand, minus two thousand. I see on sports bet tripping, bro. <laughs> Bugging, I don't even know. The low, the cheapest you could find him at is minus 719 on cloud bet. That's egregious, bro. It should at least maybe like minus 500, maybe because Chara is definitely live. You know, he hits, hits damn hard, bro. He has Moreno in his corner, I think. He's good with Moreno. He he was Moreno's main training partner at some point, bro. Like we we go over, we gloss over that man. These fighters, I mean, at twenty seven, he's probably still getting better. You know, Tyra too. So, all I'm saying, this is gonna be a way bigger. This is what I'm saying with my monologue is that it's gonna be a way bigger test. People are making out to see him. I'm picking Tyra's to get the upset. I think you know Tyra's young, man. I mean, anything can happen. We just saw Rosas get upset, so. Do I want this to happen? No, but I'm just being realistic, man. We got to, you know what I'm saying? Um, next fight, Robbie Lawler versus Nico Price. Um, I will say the odds should be way closer than they are. Like, they have Nico Price. Like, yeah, he, I don't think it should be 2-1, to one, man. I think it should be close to, like, a pick em or like Not a pick em, but, like, Nico Price, like, minus 170 or something like this. Like, minus 150. Some places they got him, like, 3-1. to one. Minus 286, that's crazy. But it should be closer on the odds. I think they're disrespecting Robbie Lawler a little bit, but at the end of the day, he's a 41-year-old. Um, I am contradicting myself. I did pick Stipe Miocic to beat John Jones, if y'all seen my last video. That, that's a little different, though. That's a little different, you know, though. Very, very different situation there. Um, but, yeah, I think Nico Price, he's just a fresher fighter. Hits hard. Um... I just I, I was shocked when Lawler lost to uh, I picked Bar Brian Barberina, but I thought you know he'd be able to weather the storm. He kind of gassed out a little bit. He looked old um, in the Barberina matchup. Nick Diaz, I mean, he looked all right, but it's Nick Diaz. So I honestly wouldn't be surprised if like Lawler went out on a win. It's it's a winnable matchup for sure, but uh, and they are they're definitely kind of out, counting him out on the odds. Um, Nico Price has washed himself too. He's like even though he's only thirty three, like he. Doesn't look like um, his past self, I guess you could say, or um, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with Nico Price by first shot knockout, but or no, nah, we'll go like maybe like round three. I don't know. I think Robbie probably, probably stays in there for a little bit. He's a tough guy, but eventually, you know what I'm saying. And, I mean, it's, it's hard to bet on also, like, just a rule of thumb. Like, you probably shouldn't bet on fighters who are about to retire. Like, it's just not a good um, thing to do. A lot of these fighters, like, on their way out. Like, Frankie Edgar got KO'd. Um, Nunes had a really good retirement, but she also was, like, a minus something, 2,000 favorite. So, um, I'm trying to think of another one. Like, I mean, Dal Cerrone. Dal Cerrone retired. Um and he just got, like, he got choked out by Jim Miller. Can't think of another one, but. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, on your way out, man, you just never want to. Unless you're like a goat, it's just not a good thing to, to live by. Um, this one, man, Val Woodburn versus Bo Nickel. You know, let's, let's, let's have another, let's have some more, uh, some more fight study, bro. Why not, why not? Ugh, okay, okay, okay. Let's 
Gracie or some good old fight study, you know what I'm saying? Um, Val Woodburn. Because, you know, Val Woodburn's whole fight career is actually on YouTube. Whole fight career. He fights for Combat Night Pro. Um, look him up. Val Woodburn. Val the Animal Woodburn. 7 0 from Jamaica. Nice, nice, nice. I think I'm in a dream right now. Okay, okay, okay. Um, they have even some of the amateur fights on here. Versus Wesley Martins. Can we see that? Because Luis Melo, I don't think, is on there. Versus Wesley Martins. That's a decision fight. I was just hoping. Oh, that's the one. Okay. That's 19 minutes. Let me just, I'll show y'all one of his fights where he just knocks this guy out, bro. Like the ones I was seeing. Brandon Johnson. Let's watch this. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see right here. Uh, Brandon Johnson. <clears throat> the guy's not, Val's not even that bad, honestly. From what I've seen. He just, I think the big thing that he could cause Bo trouble is that he's not, he's not long-legged. He's kind of short and stocky, so that might prove to be a little harder for him. <laughs> And Val got some power too. I've seen like he has a little bit of an overhand right right there. I will say he's not fighting the best competition. He has some wrestling himself too. Can grapple somewhat. Uh, not not to the level of Bone Echo though. No, nowhere near. Um I think the bet, if you're gonna place a bet, probably just like Val first round knockout, maybe. It's just hard to see like him. Survive it too long with Bo Nickel, honestly. I mean, look at these grappling exchanges. Like, Bo, Bo is just taking him out right here. Um, it will be interesting, too. Like, um, Bo, like, how, how long he's, he's going to strike, too. Um, in his other fights, he just completely neglected it. Like, he had a failed fa failed kick, and then he immediately just stuck on to Jamie Pickett for the remainder of the fight. No, no really strikes thrown, even. Um, not too much, just completely try to wrestle. So it'll be interesting, like, is he gonna try to like strike with Val Woodburn somewhat? Is he gonna try to, what is he gonna try to do? I could definitely see this position like recreated in the fight with Val Woodburn just cause uh, Bo Nick was six foot one and Val's like five foot eight. He's short, bro, short, zero reach, bro. Like he's like very, very stocky, short and stocky. Um, with that comes strength though, I mean, to mention, but yeah, Val, Val, all he got, all he really has is a prayer and an overhand right, man. I'd love to see him win, but it's, it's you know, it's tough. Possible, though. I mean, Bo Nickel, young in his MMA career, so this guy almost has doubled the amount of fights and amateur experience, too, so. I feel like I'm gonna get copyrighted, bro. Shoot, I mean not. I want to show all this. Right. So okay, where does he get the takedown? Okay, so he flips the position. A lot of, a lot of just pushing against the cage. I ain't gonna lie. Pushing against the cage. He's doing some good stuff. I like how he's like grabbing the wrist right there. He's 30 years old, so I, mean, I ain't gonna lie. Gets the single. Gets the double. Picks him up. Boom. Bro, nonstop's crazy by Drake. I gotta really listen to that, bro. That's 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 like my OG favorite song. I ain't gonna lie. It's 
first Drake song I ever heard, probably. First, I memorized the whole song to this day. But, um, yeah, man, Bo Nickel, Val Woodburn. Uh, I think, I think, I think, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just take a flyer, bro. Honestly, my, my pick record is so bad. Like, at this point, on Tavology, is so bad. Like, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's actually atrocious. Like, it's pretty bad. But, okay, that, what I should be, I'm trolling, bro. There's no way. I mean, Probably by seven round one, low key. Probably by seven round one, but I think he's. I will burn give much more resistance than other guys. I hope. I hope I'm wrong. Honestly, I hope I'm wrong. I, I like if I wanted to give him my like. This is probably like the most likely scenario. He been so many guys in round one. Stick it to the grappling. Stick it to the submission game. He did have a lot of trouble like getting that arm triangle choke. So, and Chip Pickett was kind of just like laid there. Didn't really know what to do. Uh, Val hits hard as hell. He doesn't, you know, he probably hit, hits way harder than Jamie Pickett did. He's probably the hardest, Jim, Val Woodburn, and, and Treshawn Gore, to, to be honest, too. Like, probably two of the hardest hitters. Had they have fought Treshawn Gore, now it's going to be Val Woodburn, probably the hardest hitters that Bo Nichols ever fought. So, in that case, man, you're really just hoping that he can land, like, a big strike, pull something off, but in all likelihood. I'm, I'm cheering for Val. I hope, he, hope I'm wrong, but... Yeah, but wait. Got to go nickel by submission round one. Um, next fight. Man, it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of, like, round one. I mean, a lot of these fights are, like, lopsided. No offense, but, like, I was on DraftKings. So I, be, I just started doing DraftKings, man. Like, this week, I feel like it's pretty. You got to find your spots, bro, because everyone's going to be doing the same stuff. A lot of the stuff is, like, priced really high with all these big favorites. Like, it's kind of hard, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to really, much, like, say here, man. I don't know what Dan Hooker thinks. Like, he's going to, like, dye his hair and everything's going to be different. Like, bro, you're not Charles, bro. You're not the Bronx, bro. Like, it's not the same, bro. Like, you can't just, like, the white hair don't give you power. It don't even look good on him, really. I don't know what it is. Like, it just don't really complement his, like, skin color, if you know what I mean. Like, it just doesn't, um, yeah, it just looks weird on him, bro. Like, it looks hard on Olivier, but the Hooker... Nah, bro. I mean, someone said like Ellen DeGeneres. Like, yeah, that's 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 not a bad comparison, man. Um, Turner's just better everywhere. I don't know what to really say. Like, better striker. He's longer. People are saying like, oh, he missed weight. Like, I mean, that's only gonna help him, man. He's gonna be big, big in there, bro. How, how long? Six foot three. And Hooker's honestly pretty big too. He's just he's a big lightweight too. And I mean, Turner's all of them, you know. Do have the same reach, so that should be interesting. But yeah, Hooker's path to victory is wrestling. Just try to wrestle. But even you know, some people think that Turner won the fight. I thought I thought Turner beat Garamut. Um, watching the live, I have to go back and rewatch. Just purely off damage because he did get grappled a lot, get taken down a lot. But he knocked down Garamut. Like yeah, I think he knocked him down. And he like rocked him a couple times in that fight. So I thought that would be enough to give him the, the fight, but. The, the judges love the wrestler boy, I guess. Um, but yeah, Hooker's gonna have to come out looking like Armas Aryuki and Islam Makachev, Khabib, like to win this fight. And I just, I don't know, bro. Uh, I don't know if he can do that one. So give me Jalen Turner to knock out Hooker in round one. Whitaker, Drickis Duplessis. Um, initially, I had I had Whitaker by second round knockout, but uh, I just I, I heard I heard Whitaker saying he wants to finish. Like, nah, I don't think he'll finish Drickus. I don't know. Drickus is just so like he's just that guy. If he does get finished, it'll be like a weird like he'll like wobble around and like the ref will step in like even though nothing happened, you know. And that's how he finishes the fight. I didn't even notice that there was that much of a reach advantage, but he does. I ain't gonna lie, he does have like low key like T Rex arms. I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> I'm tripping, I'm tripping. But nah, we got the same reach. This is like my reach right here. If I was a fighter, I, I measure my reach. I'm like 73 inches. That's bad, bro. He's six foot with 73 inches. I'm like, I'm like five nine. I would say five eight. Um, I'm a short guy, man. Honestly, man. Pretty short. Um, yeah, I'm like five eight, five nine, five seven. I'm five seven. So, I'm 5'7", really, with the 73-inch arm reach, man. Like, it's crazy, man. Um, 
No, I ain't five. I'm like I'm like five eight. I'm like five eight. Something like that. Yeah, so I'm I'm five eight with seventy three inch arm reach, man. This guy's six six foot with seventy three inch arm reach. Like that's that's T Rex arm. Just, just like proportionally, it just doesn't like. Should, you shouldn't be that tall with like that short of arms, you know. And then you look at a guy like Drickus, you know, that the true African champ. You know what I mean? The true African champ. Um, I mean the ape the ape index has to be crazy right here. Um, six foot one with a seventy six. Uh, wait. Yeah, he's a positive ape index, but this one right here, man. Yeah, that's negative. No, it's positive, but like by a little bit. Cause twelve times six is like seventy two. So he still does have a longer reach than his height, but nothing crazy, nothing crazy. He has a way bigger like ape index. But yeah, man. I'm I gotta go with the boy. Oh, I go with Whitaker. I just I'm try I try to think of scenarios of like how Drickus could win. He could probably like have a fluky knockout, like do something crazy, like maybe. I just can't see how it would happen. Like he does hit really hard, and like Whitaker, been chin sometimes. You know, what I mean, he's taking the damage, but like every single time, I think he's gonna look old or maybe get finished. You know, like he just he never looks old. He's still in there, still seems like he's in his prime. He hasn't like aged as a fighter yet, so he's still very much in his prime. I I just I can't pick him by knockout though. I can't. He, he ain't been a finisher lately. I mean, I don't. Drickus is really tough, man. He eats some like hard shots and just keeps coming back. So, um, even though I think there's a like a vast, there's like a really big skill disparity between these guys, between Drickus's power and you know like Whitaker, like not finishing fights as of recent. Like I said, it's been a lot of since he got to finish. So, three round fight. <sighs> Go with Whitaker by decision. Um, and then we'll get Sean Strickland versus Adesanya in Sydney, hopefully. So can't wait to see that. But I mean, there's there's a lot of intrigue in this fight just because like you really don't know what's gonna happen. Like even though I am sitting Whitaker's by decision, like there's some people who like genuinely think Drake has a chance. Who think he could like pull some fluky stuff out. I'm here for it, man. I mean, if it happens, I don't know if I'm cheering for it. I don't really have a like a, a side in this race, but. Um, or I don't got a horse in this race. That's what they say. Yeah, so I don't got a horse in this race, but uh, it would be interesting to see, like, what happens. Like, if Drake is where to win, it would kind of revive the, the middleweight division. I think that's what's kind of needed. Uh, but he's just, he's just not good enough, you know? Ugh. So, yeah, like I said, Whitaker by decision. It's like a uh, co-main event, sorry. Alexander Pantoja versus Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno, cry baby, cry baby, Brandon Moreno. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Shout out to Davidson, man. What's up with Davidson? All right, you got to got to fight with um Dominic Cruz. You know, I was man, I was cheering for Davidson, man. I wanted him to beat Moreno, you know, but um, it didn't happen like that, you know. what I mean, um, unfortunately, Davidson facing Dominic Cruz now, but let's focus on the coming event here. Um. Brandon Moreno versus Alexander Pantoja. They've already fought twice. I'm going to just keep it plain and simple. Like, I think Moreno probably should win this fight. He's probably made more than, more of the improvements than Alexander Pantoja. And Pantoja's, like, old, like, 30, 33. And Moreno's 29. So that window of, like, I've heard, like, other people say this, too. Like, like through, like, the whole series that Moreno and Figgy were having, that was kind of his time that he could have been like using to capitalize and like get that shot off Moreno, but all that time passed and he's kind of been like fading in the darkness. And that was time that he could have been fighting Moreno, possibly getting the belt off of him. So all this, you know, this time's passing. Um, Moreno's continuously getting better. That allowed for Moreno to get better and you know for him to catch up to Pantoja a little bit. But with all that being said, Pantoja does have that mental edge of beating Moreno twice, destroying him or subbing him first, and then in the second fight, just completely destroying him. Um, I think psychologically, that does something to a person. Like, whether Moreno wants to admit it or not, these are two completely different fighters than they were in the past, but same names, same faces. They, they, they're they familiar with each other. They fought each other twice, and Pantoja's been the, the guy on top. And I think this time it's going to be no different. I think Pantoja's, it's going to be a war. It's going to be back and forth, but in the end, 
Pantoja. Actually, no. I don't know if Pantoja can win a decision. Give me, like, submission in round three. I think he catches that back and submits him. Gets that done. Give me Pantoja by submission in round three. And new flyweight champion of the world. Pantoja. Bringing Brazilian their, I mean, probably their, because they, this is the first time in like a couple years they haven't had a Brazilian champion. Now that Nunes vacated, it's kind of stupid. Like if she would have like not retired and just like stayed for like just like a little bit and waited till this card, then they would have still had like a Brazilian champion on the roster for like kept the record going. So it probably would have got broken anyways. But yeah, this fight too, Bokadowski versus Yair Rodriguez. <sighs> oh shoot, tired man. Um. Yeah, Volkanovski, man, um, after what I saw against the Islam fight, man, I was just so impressed, you know, even though I thought he clearly lost. I mean, for him to go up in a weight class, have enough skill to negate the size difference, go out there. I was I was, I was impressed with both of them, to be honest, like Islam striking and then um, Volkanovski being able to defend the takedowns. But I was so impressed with both their performances. Um, Volks especially, I think it's a good argument for him to still be bound for by number one, even though he did lose. Um... Yeah, in this matchup, I mean, I think he's just going to go out there and try to out-grapple Yair Rodriguez, especially that, like, he got to grapple my Max Holloway. Got to take it down. Um, Max Holloway got his back even, and Max Holloway's not even known for any of his grappling. So I think Wodowski could use his size and strength, probably get through. And Yair Rodriguez alludes to this, so he kind of, I think he, he knows that probably, like, this is what the fight's going to come down to, like, the grappling. So it's just, I think it just depends when Volkanovski decides to shoot. I know he's been working with uh, Craig Jones for a while at B-Team Jiu-Jitsu and all those guys training for the Maka Jeff fight. So they're going to continue doing that, I think. Volkanovski has this weird thing, uh, kind of like what Ja Jones does to an extent, trying to beat people at their own games. So if, you're using, if, if someone's a striker, then he'll try to strike with them. If someone's a wrestler, I'll beat you there. But I think Yair is just too dangerous on the feet, too unpredictable for Volkanovski to like, want to take that risk. He can negate a lot of risk by grappling, uh, by going about that in the early part of the fight. And then later on in the fight, when Yair's kind of tapered down and he's chilling, um, which I don't even know if you could really guarantee that. Like, Yair's dangerous throughout the fight. I mean, you saw in the Korean zombie fight, got that, like, late, he had the, you know, that weird knockout. So he's dangerous throughout. Like, he's going to fight. But I think that's when Volkanovski will maybe try to strike more. But for the early portions of the fight, I think he'll try to neutralize him. Um, try to take him down, try to eliminate that risk on the feet, and then maybe rounds four and five, he'll strike with him, and then show why he's pound for pound number one, why he's the best in the world, and why he is the undisputed featherweight champion of the world. Give me Volkanovski, Alexander Volkanovski, by decision <clears throat> to defeat Yair Rodriguez at UFC 290 in the main event. That's all I really got for y'all. I'll give you my locks, go through the whole card. Um, give me, I think Volkanovski's a lock. I think Robert Whitaker's a lock. No, I actually take that off, bro. I, any drink is fight, bro. You can't be too sure, bro. Like, don't honestly like restrain from betting on on Whitaker, bro. If you're gonna bet, bet for bet for the fight to go like over one and a half or something like this. Um, just don't. Just, I honestly refrain from betting on the fight at all. Actually, just don't. Yeah, if someone asks you like, hey, bro, I got Drickus, like, hey, let's bet, let's bet, like, just say no, bro. Because when when Drickus like pulls out some some crazy stuff, bro. You're gonna be so mad, so just just save yourself, save yourself, and just stay away from the fight. So give me Volk, give me Jalen Turner, hundred percent. Give me Bo Nickel, give me Yasmin Uregi, give me Vito Petrino, Cameron Simon, a Simon, I you want to say, it. and then Esteban Rubovich. Those are my locks. A lot of locks on this card. A lot of heavy favorites. If you probably those all together, you probably get a good return. Um. That's all I really got for y'all. Save that right there. I'll try to make a quick turnaround. I've been making a lot of videos lately with like all these fights getting announced. Uh, try to make a quick turnaround for this next card. Take a quick look at it. Okay. Let me see here. Holly Holmes, Silva, oh, bro, what is this card, bro? This is a trash card, bro. Yeah, this looks like, oh, this looks like a lot of research is gonna have to be done, bro. 
a lot of research. <laughs> no, I know like a, I know a Zaytar, I know McKinney, I've heard of Prado, I know Chelsea Chandler and Norma Dumont, Walt Harris. I've heard of these guys, but I don't know how they fight some of these guys. Like, like okay, bro, who is? Let's be honest, who is Carl Deaton and Alex Munoz, bro? Who is? Okay, I've heard of Gennaro Valdez. I don't know where I've heard him from, but. Oh, Natan Levy. Oh, I've seen that fight, and then he got knocked out. I've seen his fight with Natan Levy. You give him a decent fight. Yeah, these some irrelevant. She just got knocked out by um, Yasmin Yuregi. Um Austin Lingo just fought. This is the guy with the Vitiligo. I know him. Short notice against Tiago Moises. I know a couple of these guys. Like, I know them, but I don't really know how they fight for real. I'd have to go back and refresh myself, but decent card. Probably going to be some hidden gems in there to bet. Um, but yeah, man, leave a like on the video, subscribe. Peace out, Moscow. You already know what it is.